Let me introduce Alex Schmidt from HSBC. You know, in order of this. Uh, Przemysław Berend from Luxoft. Jola Gankowska from Alexanderman Solutions. And Małgorzata Romaniuk from uh, BPH Bank. Uh, okay, so could you introduce yourself? Because I have always problem with uh, um, corporate structures and the names of you know positions, so I don't want to make any mistakes in that. So please introduce yourself and tell some some words uh, to our audience about uh, your position, about your duties, what are you doing, what what uh, was your way? That. Do you want me to start? Yeah, okay, you're All the right. first. So once again, my name is Przemek Berent. And I represent a company called Luxsoft, uh, IT services company headquartered in Switzerland, here in Poland as of 2010. When it comes to the corporate structure, I actually run the marketing department, uh, which uh, includes also the CSR program and the employer branding piece. Um, um, and where I fit in the corporate structure, kind of answering the questions, I report directly to the CEO. So I think I have a pretty influential role in managing teams across the world from Mexico through the US, uh, Europe and, and, and Asia. And the reason why I'm actually passionate about the topic, and I'm not, I don't think I can say I'm an expert of the topic, but I'm very curious about the topic, is fewfold. So first, I actually believe, and I have this hypothesis, and I see some early evidence that there is a very solid business case in uh, including gender equality within the workplace, and we can talk about it a, a bit later more. Uh, second of all, I'm actually a husband of a very powerful and successful woman, and I've seen her struggle throughout her career, you know, uh, trying to, to, to battle some of the uh, gl ceiling glass and other issues uh, that, that she has. Uh, she's also a mother of four and just returned to her workplace, and that's another driver why I'm particularly interested in that topic, because uh, two out of four are girls, right? And I want my girls to grow up in, in a better world that we are living in, so. Thank you. Yeah, again, Alexandra Schmidt, um, head of HSBC um, here in Krakow. So, um, what does it mean? Um, around about 2,600 um, people are working in our service center. Um, it is uh, with regards to IT, it is operations, it is um, finance operations as well. Um, my career in HSBC started 17 years ago, um, and then my little tiny journey started within HSBC. So, um, as you can hear probably, I'm not a native English speaker as well, so originally I'm from Germany. I moved to Luxembourg, I moved to, um, uh, I moved to Poland in 2014 for the first time. There's a reason why I came back. Um, maybe we will have a chat about this as well. Um, so, and I'm... Um, yeah, what can I say? I'm, I'm heading the entity itself. So, um, but in my management board, there are um, uh, a lot of men around. Um, and uh, I'm the woman who's um, uh, heading this. Yeah, and um, I think more will be shared within the, the uh, conversation right now. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jola Gantkowska. I'm uh, uh, running our operations, uh, Alexander Mann Solutions operations in Poland. So uh, I have been actually with that company for over 12 years now. So it kind of started from the beginning. Uh, and we are now over uh, 1,000 people uh, across Krakow uh, and Gdańsk. And I'm really proud of that, I must say. But, uh, uh, but I think the reason why I'm here today is actually because I am quite passionate, a person in general, uh, passionate about the topic. I think passionate in a maybe a different way because I always ask myself a question, does gender matter? And that's something that I would like to uh, elaborate uh, while we are uh, talking and discussing. Um, have some, uh, some of my own experiences from maybe workplace, but also being part of uh, different organizations uh, uh, operating in the, um, in the sector. Um, and the more I think about it, uh, the more I think that gender doesn't matter. It's just probably something that it's in our head that tells us that it should. So, uh, more to come. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Małgorzata Romaniuk. I'm Vice President of Management Board, BPH. This is G Capital Group. I'm also, and I would like to really emphasize that, and this is also the reason why I'm here, uh, I'm co-leader of the 
GE internal GE organization, which is called Women's Network. I'm responsible for the East region in EMEA. And major part of my free time, let's say, that <laughs> I spending to support women from years. In fact, I, I joined to GE almost oh, 18 years ago. <laughs> and I also joined almost the same time the Women's Network. And from this day, uh, I, I started a, a really uh, journey and I learned a lot how important is diversity on organization and what the managers, top managers can do. So I'm here because I believe that the women matters in organization. I'm here because I would like to say it loudly that we need to focus on that and the top management or each company. And I would like really to support you if you need that, of course, but I believe that we are here all because we need to support each other. Thank you so much. Uh, first part of our conversation, I would like to focus on, um, on the programs um, and the background is we have the pipeline pro problem because we want to discuss about organizations um, and the problem which is within the organization. Uh, you will have a lot of panels to choose to, to talk about um, you know, internal barriers uh, women have on, and problems they face, but here we want to focus on our organization. Um, and uh, the disparity uh, starts at the entry level, um, where men are 30% more likely to be promoted than women, and then it continues. And finally, at um, the C level, we have um, uh, uh, women to hold less than 20% of, uh, of C level uh, positions. This is taken from McKinsey, so please, I don't, I don't take responsibility for that. You will uh, find probably um, any other um, uh, uh, results of, of any other research. This is really plenty of them um, uh, to be available. Um, uh, so, um, my question is many companies. Uh, undertake a lot of programs, but uh, is it enough? Do they do it well or not? Our first question um, uh, addressed to Yola is about a more general opinion um, and more general assessment of the programs uh, you, uh, um, you can find on the market and you meet with. So maybe maybe what I can do because I'm sure you know we have different experiences. So uh, because Alexander Mann Solutions is a company that um, uh, is a talent acquisition and talent management company. So we work with a lot of clients, uh, and and uh, and also here here in Poland. And I'll probably focus on Poland to make it more relevant um, uh, on actually acquiring talents so or recruiting talent to to their organizations. And what I'm seeing is, and so I'll talk about the recruitment programs or the attraction programs. And I think attraction is, is kind of a key word here. Um, I think what I see is a lot of companies are focusing a lot on attraction uh, campaigns. So going out there, being visible, telling, oh my God, go join us, join us here. Uh, you're going to make a career. Especially, I think it is um, around IT because I think there is, you know, even, I mean, those, those charts probably look, would look totally different. But what I see less of in Poland, and I think that's our opportunity and that's actually my passion, uh, something that uh, hopefully at some point will come through, so maybe when we talk in five, ten years, uh, we're going to see more of that. I think there is still not enough of um, uh, recognition of success that we're already having in this uh, area in the companies that are promoting uh, and, and, and trying to attract uh, uh, women into, into IT or into, into their organizations. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, today in today's world, I mean, probably most of the inf information you are getting from uh, your networks, from talking to your colleagues, to people that you know. Uh, before you join a company, uh, you probably, you know, have spoken to a number of people, you have checked the internet, you have, you know, done your research, and then you read the job description, then you read the campaign, uh, and then you decide if you apply. That's pretty much how it works uh, broadly. Uh, so if I see great campaign and great, uh, uh, you know, attraction campaign and, and companies being visible out there, you know, those billboards and stuff, and then you don't hear that things are happening uh, internally, then there is a mismatch. There is no credibility to whatever is on that billboard to what's happening in the, uh, in the company. And I'm not saying those things are not happening, but what I'm saying is we are not making them visible. What I would love to see in five years' time 
uh, is having a, um, I don't know, Women in IT Award in Poland, in Krakow. And having a big conference, not discussing problems of why we can't do it, but showcasing that we actually can do it. Because I'm pretty sure in many organizations, and my colleagues probably have more technology uh, teams that, uh, that, that I do, uh, we have so much success that we can show out there. And I think, that, so, so going back to your question, I think we've got great programs that focus on attracting women, and that's great, but I think we need to now, now it's the time to shift that to show that we have great uh, success at every level. And I think that's, uh, that's that at least my, my, my personal opinion, my personal passion. Uh, uh, Przemek, uh, you told me that, that your company has a completely different view. Um, uh, you focus on, on women, of course, and you focus uh, um, uh, much on, uh, on attraction as itself, but you go far beyond. So could you tell something about the, sure. about it? Let me start by maybe setting a bit of context on for what is our struggle as an industry. So in the IT industry, it's said that there are 800 unfilled vacancies, 800,000 unfilled vacancies in Europe, and 2 million around the world. There should be, that's the number, and it's the estimate that comes from the uh, European Commission and some US uh, governmental agencies. So total two, um, 2 million of uh, unfilled IT vacancies around the world up until 2020, so only you know, two years from now. So if we had two, two million more IT professionals of any gender, we could easily you know, get this industry to, to the next level. Now, if we zoom in and we look on what's happening in our region in Poland, uh, those numbers are actually quite dramatic. Like if we figure out like what's happening in our in our land, so only 13.5 of uh, employees within the IT services industry in Poland are women. Right now, uh, the European Union average is about 20 percent, but there are some countries such as Romania. It's 25 percent. It's far, you know, far from 50, which would be probably the ideal state, right? But still, you can see that it's already. 12% gap, we could actually make up. Uh, but, but you mean, sorry uh, for interrupting, uh, the general numbers or, or the, uh, basic, basic positions? It's, it's across the board, right? Oh, okay. So unfortunately, the data I've seen didn't kind of analyze it on the different levels, but uh, basically they looked at the number of women within the IT industry. So the, the conclusion is in Poland, it's super low, right? As I said, it's only estimated at 13.5%. Uh, so say we can actually change that you know, to, to 25%, right? Uh, we would add, say, 20,000 more employees to the labor pool. Immediately, that translates into not only revenues for the, those companies who are struggling to actually close that gap, but also to the economy and society, you know, more taxes being paid, et cetera. I did a little kind of uh, napkin uh, calculations on the way here. It came out that we are missing some uh, closely to like 800 million Polish lotus of uh, uh, revenue coming into the economy that translates probably into like uh, 200 million of different types of uh, taxes that could have been paid. So the business case is there. Like we, uh, as a country, as companies, we need more women in, uh, 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 in the workplace, especially in the IT industry. Now back to your question, why do we focus more on talking about gender equality rather than focusing on attracting women? There are a few answers to that. So first, uh, I have this hypothesis, and I don't have any proof to that, is that if we focus solely on communicating to women, we'll further polarize those two groups, right? Actually, even looking into this room, I think this hypothesis is true. Since we are directing the communication to women, you know, there are a number of women in IT uh, conferences that I've been to, and it's always like that. You know, if you go to the women in IT conference, there will be women. Well, what's, you know, that's what the tar conference targeted, that's who came. And I think the issue is elsewhere. I think the issue is actually lack of the awareness of the problem itself. I think that's the number one problem we need to resolve before we move farther down uh, the pipeline. And I think many people, uh, guys and women as well, they don't realize that uh, gender equality is an issue for the business and they should realize that, right? Uh, so we started asking ourselves as a company the question, where does this begin? Right, and again, it's only all hypothetical. We would like to study that and get some data. So I'm actually quite curious to talk to Tomek later on to see how we could actually make that happen. My hypothesis is that it actually starts super early on in the educational journey. And I even see it with my daughters, right? Like, as I ask them, like, why don't you go to the extracurricular, you know, uh, computer classes? And they didn't give me a straight answer. Like, there's, oh, it's not something that girls do. I said, why, why not? Like, you think you're not smart enough? No, I'm just not interested in it. And that intrigued me. Right? I don't understand why that is, and I think there are a number of factors. Uh, it's us parents, you know, talking about it and how attractive that is, uh, but I think it's also school. I think media plays a major role. 
And I think as a community, we need to make uh, this uh, basically a mainstream agenda. So uh, as a company, we decided not to further build this polarization. We didn't want to speak about women in IT. We said we want to talk about gender equality. We want everyone within the company to have equal rights. We will first filter you through the, uh, uh, the competency filter, right? And then we'll look at other filters, right? Like, uh, ideally, I would like to get a blindfolded CV. There are some studies that they actually run a blindfolded CV study uh, where the outcome was that women were equally more inclined to get uh, the job as the men, right? Once you introduce the names to the CV, you could immediately see the, the gender bias into action, right? So clearly the problem is there. The question is how do we solve that? So what we do as a company, we are trying to actually, and we are super early in this journey. We, we just started, so we are learning, we are trying to, uh, to build the data, but part of, uh, of our uh, effort is actually education. So we started some programs, we are actually cooperating with the uh, uh, Universitat Dzieci, uh, where we are running programming classes, right? And we want to talk about uh, the importance of IT career track as per se, and also uh, get the kids interested in it, in it. Now, what was shocking to me, and again, we just started that program, I think two weeks ago, we ran the first um, set of exercises, the first group came to, to study that. 100 kids signed up for the class, only three girl, girls, right? And again, like, this makes me wonder, like, why is that? Like, why is there are so few girls interested in that topic? And I don't know the answer, but I'm curious enough to try to find the answer. Yeah, we discussed that this is uh, the mindset of teachers, of parents, and, and you know, the society <laughs> problem, maybe. Uh, okay, let's go back to, to uh, the company ground. We, uh, we discussed uh, uh, um, attraction. But now I would like to talk more about advancing women. And uh, Małgorzata, could you tell me, because you are very successful with, with your programs, uh, uh, could you tell me something more, what to do and how to organize, how to uh, um, design and then realize um, uh, successful and effective um, programs that really support uh, women? Okay, I'm looking still on this, you know, these um, figures which are here, and I will say that maybe at the beginning, the time came, came from, you know, the financial sector, and the statistics are worse. Mm -hmm. The entry level, it's 70 women and 30 men in organization. At the C level, it's, it's approximately the same result. So, you know, the, the, the space for doing something for women is huge. I definitely believe that the organization culture is the, the, the most significant uh, factor for promoting women and supporting them in organization. And always I say about the, the true diversity agenda and opposite I call some agendas as a paper agenda. That when we ask the people on this, uh, this room, probably each company do have the diversity agenda and a lot of activities. But my question is, is the real agenda and it's measured the results of those agendas or this is only the paper agenda because we need to fulfill our some, you know, rules, restrictions on the some recommendation which we receive from the headquarter, for example. There's also a summary research that said that the women are definitely self-confident in the terms of their ability to be promoted for the top position. But also the research said that they do not have enough confidence that their company is able to support their rights. So how to deal with that and how to show them that we really would like to, to help them or even give them the space because help Maybe it's not the appropriate word in this way, but give the space, give the organization and the culture and mindset which allow them to believe that that company needs really women. And I do have, in fact, uh, two great examples. The first one is this internal GE examples that 20 years ago the, the group of women came to the Jack Wells, he was a f former CEO of the company, and asked him to, to give exactly them the space for just networking, for the platform on which they could just, you know, share the best practice, just have a, some kind of the training, but they really needed a pure networking, which could, gr could gr gr help them to grow, in fact. 
And this organization is very successful from these 20 years. We just celebrated in the middle of the summer these 20 uh, years of the Women's Network. And a lot of women, which I really know, they are beneficent of this organization. But also the company is a great beneficiary of you know, this organization because the diversity agenda is alive. So there are clear rules that they you know the, the everybody do have the same rights and they be promote. And we just propose the development program for women, but also of course for the men. Because I don't want to you know just overlook the men in the diversity agenda. This is also very important that everybody in company feel equal and and have you know enough support. Uh, but this is not a formal organization, this is volunteers organization. And probably this is such great success behind this organization because they are working the people who really would like to do something for organization. So they really spend uh, free time for proposing some actions, engage in events and share the knowledge. Also the top management is engaging that. And for example, if any, top world leader from GE is coming to Poland, he or she always find out the time in this agenda for the meeting with Women's Network, which show exactly the, you know, the, 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 the role models and they are doing because they also believe that they need to support this organization and women. The second example which I'm, I would like to share with you is that so th 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 this is something like the initiative, I will call that. It's called Wim Leaders In, and that was established by the four companies three years ago. That one was BPH, the second one was Deloitte, uh, Citibank, and Vital Voices, this is the foundation. And everything started when we just decided as the networks in each of those organizations, there's a network dedicated for women and the vital voice, voices in the women network itself. We decided to stop to meeting and talking about the issues, problems, exactly those problems which were mentioned by very young men. <laughs> but we decided to do something to do on the Polish market. And just like and I, I, I just listed those companies, so there were so two banks which are in fact the competitors on the market. But I, I think that we don't need to be competitors in the diversity, definitely. One day I, my company is beneficial that the women are stronger and more you know, self-confident. Other day the other's company will be beneficial of that. So, we decided to just establish the cross-mentoring leadership program for women. In first year, 11 companies decided to join us. The rules are really tough because the top managers need to be engaged in this program as a mentors. And the women from this organization, which we can call the women from the pipeline of the, you know, the promotion pipeline or something like that, they are mentees. In this, this year, we started third edition, and the four, 24 companies is in the program, 51 pairs. I will say that we all learn about, you know, how to just adjust and how to accelerate the change on the Polish market. But the program still is alive, and the companies just approach us and won't like to join. So this is something which show Let's do something, stop only doing about these prog problems, but show that we, together, can change you know, the perception also about the women on the Polish market. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I have a lot of questions about the measures uh, you have to, to, to check uh, the success of, of your networks, but uh, you will talk uh, uh, about it more probably at, at um, the workshop. Uh, Alexandra, um, when we met, uh, you mentioned um, that you would like to, to focus on uh, uh, mentoring programs, how to make them uh, efficient and successful, but you also met, and, and I would like to also uh, ask you this question, 
um, that um, you see the need of uh, supporting women that are coming back from maternity leaves, that, that you see the lack of, um, of such programs. Yeah, so actually I pointed out um, that it's always an issue and that we have to support um, uh, women that are coming back to us because um, everything has changed in the meanwhile. Um, uh, there is a little kid right now uh, on top of all the um, responsibilities that you have anyway as a woman. So um, um, these are the programs uh, that we are launching right now um, really to give um, uh, more opportunities to... to um, women that are coming back. What I've mentioned as well is that I'm always a little bit concerned about these women who are on this level right now um, where you want to build up a family. So um, just to give you an example, I'm 41 right now. I have a lot of friends um, who are telling me right now in this age about 40. I'm talking to women who are telling me, well, I probably missed this moment when I wanted to um, build up my family. And I, I, I really wonder why, because they were focused on the career, they always had this uh, feeling that they had no time to, um, to, to work on this additional topic like a family. This is something what, what makes me worried as well. So why do we have such a pressure? Why do um, women have this pressure on their back that they can't fulfill it all in one? And this is why I, I also would like to do something about how can we somehow take all these concerns from, from, uh, from the woman's um, back so um, that they don't have to be worried any longer that they that this means automatically that um, when they have the first kid or something like this, that that will stop their whole career. Um, and this is something on what we should set our focus as well. Okay, thank you. But um, when we uh, discuss about programs, we always have the perspective of some systematic solutions like parities, for example. This is what I'm uh, against, too, um, to be honest. But um, um, uh, we told you that, that we will talk about um, uh, difficult topics here. So the question to Yola. I know your position on the topic. So tell me, uh, tell us, uh, how do you see parities uh, in business? Uh, they, uh, do they really help uh, women and they really support um, uh, gender balance? Uh, how companies benefit from that, if so? You can see I strengthened up, so I'm looking forward to that, uh, to that discussion. But uh, I think um, probably it's not for me to say whether they work or not. It's for the companies to say whether they work or not. But what I can uh, do is share two perspectives. One is again uh, coming from, uh, from, from my industry uh, and, and how we work with the clients where there are uh, parities. Uh, and by the way, I do not agree with them uh, either, but that's a personal view that I'm going to share as a reflection um, 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 uh, in the second, second part of, uh, of the answer. So I think I started working in recruitment what, 15 years ago and already then we, we, I worked with the clients with, 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 with organizations, large companies, global companies, where uh, we had in our contract um, a need to submit a shortlist with five candidates, three men, two women. Yeah. So it is not a new thing. It's not a trend. It's not something that uh, that 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 you know just appeared. And I do remember at that time, and I and this is the case today as well. Uh, and no matter whether it's recruitment, no matter whether it's politics, no matter where it's um, economy, wherever it's a business, um, the challenge is that I think parities work or could work uh, where, they, where, where everyone actually understands and knows how to manage them. Because what I observed at that time was, first of all, a hiring manager, so a person who wanted to get someone um, to do the job, they didn't know what to do about that. They, they said, some of them said, oh, it's a corporate thing and we've got to have those five candidates uh, and, and, and two of them have to be female. So, so first of all, that education of why they are put in place is really important. And I think, I think from my perspective, this is neglected. The second thing is, and that's kind of going to my personal uh, reflection as well, is how... Think about it, you know, you, you're gonna, you, one of you is going to get to the short list of five uh, and you know that, uh, that, that two of them have to be female. How does it make you feel? I mean, does it make you feel that I made it because I'm good? 
or, be, uh, or, do, I, or do you have a question? I made it because I'm uh, one of the two that had to make it. So immediately it puts you in a position of thinking or question mark of why did I get that job or why did I make it to the shortlist? And that's what I don't like about those parities because, and, and by the way, the blind CVs is already a trend and we are talking to clients globally where uh, they are asking us when are we going to or where they could introduce the no name, no sex, no uh, age uh, CV, just capabilities. So that's coming and that's gonna, if, if it's not there, it, it's gonna come very quickly. So that's why I think when we talk about parities, I think that education piece and understanding of why they are there, then it could work. But in my opinion, immediately puts those who are uh, the, the minority on that shortlist under question. And it can be female, it can be you know, uh, different, uh, uh, different race, etc. That already puts your, uh, the question mark to you. And why am I talking about it? Because I found myself I think probably about, what, four or five years ago. Um, so, so obviously I've been building my career and, you know, it's been great. And I've never, ever thought about uh, myself as a woman uh, in, in, at, at work. I just thought about myself as someone who needs to do a good job, do the best that I can uh, to, uh, to, 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 to actually be uh, noticed and get, a, get maybe a career promotion. And maybe I'm lucky because maybe that's how my parents raised me and they didn't... To your point, they didn't tell me, oh, you, you're a girl, so you shouldn't be doing this. So I was just progressing in this maybe a little bit naive uh, way. I'm going to do a good job. I'm going to be rewarded for that. And then I'm going to uh, have a career progression the, way that, the one that I want. And I think uh, probably about five years ago, people started noticing, oh, she, 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 she's done well. She's, they started to invite me to discussions like that. And suddenly, I find myself going into a room of one of the boards um, of the associations that I'm part of, and I'm going to that room, your story from, from, the, from the beginning. Um, and I go in, and there is 10 guys there sitting. And I find myself, I had never had those thoughts before, I'm like, oh, damn, what am I doing here? You know, I'm, I'm the only woman. What should I do? Should I be here? And then immediately I stop myself and stop thinking that. But this was the first time that I noticed that discussions, I'm not saying those discussions are not good, I think, but they should be more inclusive. I counted seven men, so it's getting better. But I think it is about the awareness and our self-awareness. And I think those discussions sometimes may generate the thinking of a shortlisted woman. Am I right to be here or... Uh, or, or what? So, so, so I now correct myself every time I think about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the, that, that, you know I, I, I've worked hard to be where I am. Uh, and it's not because I'm a woman or not because I'm not a woman. It's just because I am who I am. And I think that's why my question, does gender matter? It depends how you think about it, and I think we should be focusing on, uh, on discussing what we should be doing, uh, and that the fact that we are different, the fact that we like to talk, I, I so agree with Jan. Uh, we love to talk, and that's why we have networking uh, sessions, that's why we have women uh, networks, etc. and let's benefit from that, but let's not focus on barriers. That's, that's my view. Can, can I jump into this discussion? Because yeah. I, I think the quotas or the diversity targets they're probably an ambitious goal, but I think in many organizations, they come way too early. It's like trying to run, whether uh, we should first uh, learn how to crawl and, and walk. And the reason being is that I think the culture of the organization needs to be ready to set such ambitious targets. And the reason why I believe in that is that I was actually on the receiving side of introducing diversity targets in one of the biggest FMCG companies, and they did it super early on, about 15 years ago, early in my career. The company made very clear and on every level, management level, we want to have certain uh, percentage of female. What we started seeing then in the organization was promotions that were not uh, skill-based, or at least from our point of view, but were gender-based. And that actually caused, you know, like, uh, we, we felt like uh, the guys were actually in minority, right? So we were wondering if we should actually start a uh, uh, men's IT network, right, uh, to, to that extreme, right? So now, years after, you know, I'm, I understand where they were heading, but what it tells me is that we as an organization, we are far not ready to actually make that commitment, right? So I think the big, better metric is to actually first check the uh, uh, kind of the temperature of the organization and ask, like, do you understand the issue, right? Do you believe that we need to fix that, right? And once you have this common belief that uh, 
indeed, the greater diversity will make the company better, we take it step by step, like saying, okay, we want 50% of female on the C-suit, will probably create, you know, guys wondering whether they should start uh, uh, men's IT networks, to be honest. And I don't think it's a solution. I think we need to build bridges, grow our awareness, and kind of go through the journey all together. I think, I think the problem with those is when they are mandated, right? So if you say you have to have 50-50, I think it's good to have a goal because that is empowering the discussion, the diversity agenda. But it, I've seen companies like, like the one that I mentioned and others where they actually mandate the fact that it has to be 50. There is no other way it has to be. And that's where this imbalance comes from both male and female. And I think that's what... Would, what I disapprove. Uh, Małgorzata, you, you are the proponent of, of uh, systematic solu uh, solutions. And can, we tell, can you tell us uh, why and what, what benefits you see? You told me um, uh, uh, last week that, that it's not possible to meet women in a short list if, if we don't have uh, such solutions. So what, what is your position on that? Yes, so m maybe I will start once again from <laughs> those figures. So, um, women remain underrepresented on top in corporations, in all sectors, in countries. And this is a fact. And those results proceed despite that there, there are available a lot of the research showing that the proper representation, proper means that just like in the, you know, it doesn't Okay. So, so, so um, those research show that the proper representations meet the proper. It's like in the on the on the labor market. Let's guess what is the percentage of the women and the men on the labor market? It's 50-50, it's 60-50, or 55-55, something like that. But this is equal numbers. And uh, those research also shows, you know, what are benefits for the companies. That those companies perform better organizationally and the financially. What is the purpose of just providing the business, make a profit? That is easy for every, everybody. And in my opinion, that the, that the situation which was described, that we need to have, you know, short lists with those ladies, in some percentage, or we need to just implement the some kind of special policy. It's only the, the, the some kind of the solution for the, for the reason which is not called or not valued still. Um, if we do have, you know, the same number of the men and the women on the market, and if you ask me what do you prefer to choose during the recruitment, these priorities or the just recruitment without the sex, name, etc. Of course that I will choose those second one. However, the market it doesn't work in this way. Because uh, women, this is not the issue that the women are not the proper for the position. In my opinion, that the, 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 the issue is that the women and the men and different. They are different in the acting, in the leadership style, communication, energy level, and some companies are in the trip that they have um, some kind of the men leadership, fixed men leadership norm. And they try to recruit, you know, to this norm. And if they are using this norm, only the 19 or less, because the, on the Polish market, on yeah, the, for example, companies which are listed on the Warsaw Stock Exchange, the, the numbers are worse. In the management board is only 12 percentage women. So if we are using those approach, we will never change those figures. And uh, I do not see any changes from years. Those figures are the same on the, on the, Polish, mar uh, on the Polish Warsaw Stock Exchange that is just measured from approximately five, six years. They are st stable. Yes. They are exactly the same. So my question is, are those women less ambitious or they do not have enough qualification 
or maybe they are not smart enough. My opinion as well is no, but we do have some issue at the beginning that the, the perception of women in organization is they are com just compared to the men norms. I also I'm learned, sorry. <laughs> sorry that maybe it's too long, but I also learned a few weeks ago that there are, you know, the heart uh, disease are very common uh, through the men, but also through women. And a lot of women just die because they are not diagnosed properly. And somebody told me, I hope that is true, but just, just I do not have the proof for that, that the special um, healthcare tools are just, you know, normalized to the model of the man heart, not the women. And this is the reason why some women die. Maybe it's tough to hear that today, but please try think why, why only this less than 20 percentage is going on the top if we do have a 50-50 men and women on the market. Alex, I know that you are, you know. Uh, uh, no, I, 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 I always get a little bit nervous. And um, nervous. So, um, yeah, and you're the same. So I, I think our, our perspective is probably the same. So um, I think, um, so uh, generally, yes, I don't want to be seen as a quota woman or something like this. So, because um, I, I just do not like this um, expression or something um, around. But what I can see is, um, and to be honest, when I, when I saw the, the job um, advertisement for, for the center director, so what happens normally? I mean, um, I see all the, the skills that you have to bring in and, and so on. I think generally my, uh, my main point is women have to be a little bit bolder. That's it you have to be a little bit more confident. You have to ask a little bit more. And this is the reason why I'm here today, to, to, to give you this part, to support you on this journey. Because this is brand new for, for, for all of us. And so this is why I'm absolutely agreeing with you. So it starts with the education. Just to give you a short example, when I got the offer here for the center director heading this whole thing, reaction from my dad was, you made it perfect, well done, well deserved, go for it. What was the first sentence that I've received from my mother? No. So you have to know I'm a stepmother and I have a partner on my side. So, and his name is Marcus. His first, uh, so my, my mother's first sentence was, and what about Marcus? <laughs> and, and this is not untypically. And, and, uh, but then I had immediately this feeling that I have to excuse myself again for doing something like this. So, and, and that's the point. So, it's not with regards to our skill set. It is not with regards to our knowledge. It is that we have to be a little bit more self-confident and that we have to start this challenge. Please apply, even if you are a little bit unsure. Um, and, and that's the challenge in it. Yeah, and yeah, what uh, I would, sorry, if I could add to that, I think, uh, I guarantee you that every single person, no matter if it's a man, male or female, would be exactly would be challenged in exactly the same way that you are, uh, because that's 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 the nature of the role. I think for me, those numbers will change when we look at an individual level, celebrate the success, give confidence, rather than looking at the kind of broad. Oh, we need to get this 19% to 50%. On that level, it will never work because you, 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 and you will not apply and will not go farther. So I think it is individual level interaction and intervention rather than um, kind of, I don't know, empty percentages that we don't know how to go about. And I would second that. I think uh, all, all you need is more courage and be more bold. Guys out there, they don't care. They have this screw it, let's do it mindset, right? And if they don't get the job, they don't get the job. 
but I've witnessed many female in my career actually standing back and waiting for the opportunity to come to them, and it simply doesn't work that way, right? It's a, it's a labor market, since it's a market, there is competition, you need to stand out, and the best way to stand out is just to raise hand and say, I want this job as well. And this is why I think I'm the best at yeah, it, and I would highly I encourage you to do that. Yeah, yeah, I have please. to add one, yeah, one, one thing. Course. I'm mentoring two, uh, four people, two uh, uh, female and two male. And actually, one of my mentoring sessions last week was how do I overcome from, from this guy, one of the guys, uh, getting ready for his first, first uh, promotion to the manager, not, not even a team, sorry, not uh, so going to the line manager, team leader. How do I overcome a fear of failure? How do I overcome a fear of not being ready for the job? It's not, it's not a lady. <laughs> it's anyone who has those fears. It's just we express them in the way that we want to talk about it. We need mentoring. We need more forum to discuss it. Because that's the way that we are created, yeah? And, um, and, and, and that's what 14-year-old kids notice. So I think that's something that we maybe talk about maybe too much. And I think one of the solutions is actually show the role models, right? So I think you guys, and you guys need to be out there and saying, okay, you know, we, we have successful careers, right? And uh, you, dear girl, and you, dear little boy, can follow me, right? And follow the suit, and this is what you need. And I think this first stage, there, there is a concept I want to actually introduce during this panel, and it comes from the technology world. There is a famous study of uh, what it's called the adoption of technology diffusion. So the guy, his name was, uh, I think, uh, James Moore or George Moore, he studied on what it takes for a given technology, say it's a mobile uh, telephone, right, or internet to be adopted. He basically said that there is a certain bell curve that it's happening, and there is a 2.5% of the populations that he would consider innovators. So people who would jump on this opportunity immediately once it kind of hits the market. Then they called it the, uh, the innovators, which is another 13.5%. So those are the people who are still kind of jumping early on before the main market uh, uh, jumps in. And then there is something he called the chasms. There is a big gap between actually those two groups who jump on the issue early on. And I think we are actually all, since we are discussing this topic in kind of this innovators uh, uh, mindset, there is the early majority and late majority and the, the laggards, right? And for any technology to kind of actually break through this, what he calls the chasm, uh, there is certain effort to, to be taken, right? To break into the early majority. And I think the, the diversity agenda, it's still in its early days. And in order to break through this chasm, we really need to focus on the awareness, right? And make sure that everyone out there is aware that the issue exists and that there is a business case in the issue, not only for the companies, but for the economy. And I think we all play a role in that, and this is a great platform to start this discussion, but I would love to see this, platform, this topic to be discussed, uh, for example, on the governmental level, right? And, uh, you know, in our current political climate, I mean, this, I, we agreed I, not I to talk politics, to but I need to throw it out wait, there. I wait don't think it's the most, you know, a trendy topic, right? And it should be, because it's actually future of our kids, it's future of our economy, our retirement, and all of that. It's all connected, but it's not there. And someone needs to start that, so... Yeah, and Małgorzata, yeah, let, 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 let me comment. Maybe, maybe there is a lot of the HR people on this, on this, yeah, in this there room. Is. I hope, <laughs> I hope there. Please look on your pipeline. How many women you've got there? Mm. Probably a lot, a lot of those women. And then look on your, you know, figures. How many of those women just were is or is going or just were, were promoted in last months, years? And ask yourself why they didn't. And please find out the, the, the reason and try to find out the solution in your company. In some companies that maybe will be exactly the priorities and the others may be some more inclusive rules for the recruitment. I think that a lot of women are really tired. And even those women which are on the top with proving each day they are as bold or the confident as their colleagues because they are different and they are women and they don't need to be bold as well if they don't want to be, but if they make great business. Please start to looking on the business results, what the women brings to company and how it's impact on the profits and then start to think about the role models of the top management. Maybe we will not need to wait for the, any parties, but if that will not work still, maybe we should to think about it. And 
thank you. Um, and uh, it's it's high time to to uh, go to the second part of our conversation. I'm really um, very sad that we don't have so much time to uh, focus on and go go deeper, um, as as deep as we really would like to. But I think that we could, you know, sit here, <laughs> yeah, to the end of the day. Um, we have a lot of um, examples of, of the business case, a lot of advantages, um, uh, uh, what is gender diversity for in business, but from your own perspective, please tell me um, what, what is uh, your point of view and what advantages do you really see and notice or discover um, uh, um, on your daily life? who wants to be first, or one single man. I don't yeah, mind okay. going first. Sure, so I already shared like this talent supply issue. I think it's a clear business case. You know, if we have a bigger pipeline, clearly we can basically cut down the cost of recruitment. So I don't think we need to continue debating that. But there are two other aspects that, that I've witnessed the first hand, and I think they're extremely important for the success of companies like ours. The, first of all, more and more, our clients, they actually expect uh, the CSR and the equality agenda to be to be there, right? It's a it's it's a checkbox within the uh, request for proposal, right? If it's not there, you simply don't compete, right? So, uh, not having the program and not acting on that uh, uh, is eliminating you from a big part of the business. And I believe that this trend will continue. Right? There is so much discussion going on about it these days that uh, companies who are not ready with that they will basically fail on the marketplace. But I think it goes farther, and I've seen it firsthand as well. I think there is certain magic happening once you actually introduce women into a deal. And I saw it uh, just recently. We were pitching a business to an Australian client, and it happened that uh, the key two decision makers out of the group who came over were female. And uh, I witnessed an uh, interesting conversation, because before we actually got into the formal part of the meeting, we had like a little coffee chit chat and they immediately gravitated to other female leaders in our organization. And I, once I saw the chemistry, I thought, we got it. Like, we, even before we went into the meeting, like, you know, we broke through so many first steps of this conversation, you know, trying to prove ourselves just by having women in our, on our team. And it worked brilliantly. So I think there is more than just the formal kind of business requirements. Uh, there is this kind of emotional or, uh, uh, aspect happening there as well, which is uh, equally important. Yeah, I think emotionality and empathy, these are um, the advantages um, that, that we, we see. And um, if you ask me if we, if we are in this decision-taking uh, process, it's always best, uh, um, the best thing to do to balance it with um, rationality. So um, if I have to take a decision, I'm talking to men and women, I get better results out of it because the view is slightly different. So, um, and this is why, why, um, why I'm, I am a big supporter of it as well. So, um, yeah, so a uh, business case, something what we don't have to discuss, it's already there. For me, it's again more broadly about diversity and the creativity that comes to the room. Uh, when we've got people representing different points of view. I mean, we are different as human beings. Uh, we are different, you know, when it comes to our cultural backgrounds, etc. So for me, there's that creativity and innovation. And I think the, the other bit, and for me, that's, that's really important is, is um, you know, it, I've got over a thousand people working uh, and, and you guys have, you know, probably even more. Uh, they, you know, when they come to work and they feel there is a balance, there is a different approach and engagement and, 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 and I don't know, feeling of being calm and, and, and bringing themselves to work. And I think that's really important. And sometimes, and I watched a great video recently, and I think it's also our role, if we are after balance and we want to bring that balance to work, we want to, uh, of course, there is a lot, being talk about well-being and balance and and I think if we want to do that uh, we we also need to make sure that we bring that balance across both genders and we make that space and we are not super women and we allow uh, men to actually come into our lives and maybe balance the, the the challenges that we are addressing so I think that also I mean so, so one aspect is that creativity and that's business related and but the the, the 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 balance as such is also influencing our lives and how we live and how we function and how we can grow and develop ourselves as individuals and that's why I think it is also important 
I think this is something what we have to underline right now. I mean, this conference is right now with regards to gender, uh, diversity, but for us, uh, it is really diversity on all levels. So, um, but this is our focus today, and there are differences and there are advantages um, uh, as well, and, and, and this is why we have to have these conversations, yeah. Yes, the, bus the business case for my company nowadays definitely is focused on the diversity. Not only gender, you know, but the diversity. And the major is issue and the reason, rather the reason why we would like to focus on that is to be the best employer on the market. Because we, we believe that this is crucial nowadays. And uh, people will just, somebody from you mentioned that probably before the accepting nowadays the offer, people are talking, you know, with the, a lot of others, the friends, the families, etc., and try to gather the, the, the information, what exactly is the company, what is the organizational climate, what is the mindset of the company. And they will not go to the company which is, you know, focused on the some so, 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 some maybe very important things, but only for themselves, not for the employees. They also, and the second reason is very <laughs> simply, diversity is impact very positively on the financial results. If we do have a women and men, if we have young and older, if we do have others group of the people, and we deliver the better result, and we can protect also, you know, company from the losses. And if somebody asks me why you are, you know, focused on the women in organization, sometimes I'm saying because of the money. The money is the, the purpose for the company. We, I don't want to, you know, start any artificial, you know, events or the initiatives and saying we are doing that because we would like only to support the women, that needs to be you no know, common agenda. The company, because they believe that the diversity is good from this financial organizational perspective, and finally that will be, you know, just, uh, could be just calculate the results in the financial results. Thank you so much. I will skip my summary because we are about to finish. Um, but I have also two questions and, and if you uh, let me, I would like to ask uh, two very important questions. One to Alex, what is um, your perspective when it comes to Polish grounds? Do you see any differences? Um, um, and could you compare, you know, the, the journey of, of a woman uh, here and there? Is it more difficult or not? And then a question to, um, to Przemek about a male perspective. Uh, why do you see um, it is important to support uh, uh, gender, uh, gender diversity and gender equality from the perspective of a man, you as a leader, but, but also as a female, uh, as a, sorry, a male um, employee? And then we will uh, give you the space to ask questions. It's now a difficult question, right? <laughs> um, I know, I told you a, that, that Asking could be a difficult. German about the Polish, uh, I mean, the difference is not really huge, you know? Um, so, so what I can see for now is, um, uh, and I do not know if it's just with regards to Poland or if it's just with regards to my own uh, personality um, as well. So general, uh, my, my forecast is that um, leadership generally will change in the next couple of years, uh, which means that we have to close the gap between our people and the management. This is something what, what will happen, and it will happen quite, quite fast. What I can see right now um, here is that um, even the younger generation, and obviously not everyone, um, but they still somehow like this, um, like the thinking in these um, hierarchies. Um, and I'm now on the opposite side, so I'm someone who's trying to, to close the gap. Um, talking a little bit more specific here about um, Krakow, there's just one, one question that I wanted to ask you. So um, you can see Yola and myself right now here. Um, and we know that we have more big players here on the market, BBH, UBS, um, State Street, and so on. Who is heading these companies? Men. Most of them. Yeah. So there is something. Why there is a reason why we need to talk. 
that's you know great summary <laughs> of this panel. <laughs> so from the men's perspective, a um, couple of thoughts. So first of all, I think uh, the reason why we need uh, equality is to avoid uh, what I would call the men's locker syndrome, right? So when the guys go into the gym and they lock themselves in the in the locker room, we we kind of go, I think, to our, like, our primal you know, instincts and we behave differently, right? We would use different language, we would talk about different topics, and I think that, uh, that also translates into workplace, right? So just introducing female into a team already kills that male locker syndrome. And I'm not sure if it's even a scientific term, I just invented that, but I think it exists. Uh, two, we spoke about all of the business case for having greater uh, uh, diversity, uh, having greater creativity as, uh, from having the, the diverse team. There is no brainer, so it, it is important. Um, but I think the big watch out from me to the community is let's try not to further polarize this discussion. I think we need to stop the like, uh, women in IT kind of camp and the men in IT camp and let's just talk about like, how do we make IT better and how do we enable everyone uh, in this conversation. Uh, and I think the, kind of the last thought from me on this topic is that I think that the action item or the takeaway for everyone in this room is for the next conference really to bring a man to this discussion. So we need to find someone in your organization who will actually be able to understand that topic and you need to have to, will have to ignite like some passion into this topic because by doing those baby steps we'll be able to break through this chasm that I was discussing, right? And uh, guys needs to be part of the solution. You, I'm pretty sure we'll not be able to fix it uh, on your own. So we need to bring more men into this discussion and at the end of the day, you know, one beautiful day maybe where my daughter gets to, to your level, they will be all equal. Uh, we, we can prepare some uh, rewards for them, like diplomas or something like that. <laughs> Maybe it will motivate them. <laughs> okay, sorry for that joke. <laughs> okay, do you have anything to comment, Bogusha? I, uh, I remember you told me that your CEO was, you observed him struggling uh, with himself and trying to convince other men uh, to be more open to women. Just, just to summarize our, our conversation. Uh, yes, uh, m m maybe I will give you some, uh, uh, some context of that, that finally we do have a great diversity now in our management board because it's 50-50. But it took a lot of time and the effort of our former CEO, just like you mentioned, because he didn't implement it in fact any parties, even the target for the management board or KPIs. By, but he did a lot of the, you know, conversation with the, the, the management board uh, members, men usually, because in past we have only approximately 15 percentage women, so that was approximately one person. Uh, so he started to show the benefits, how we can perform better as an organization, what we can just gain an organization. That was really tough because that took really more than six or seven years, if I remember correctly. He didn't push, he always showed examples. Show examples from different market, from the G, from the companies outside the, uh, the Polish market, but also from Polish market, and engage in each initiative for women. And after years, I would say the perception was changed. And those men w were ready to just invite more women to the management board. So there is possible to, to do this in that, I would say, that very friendly way uh, by changing the perception. Uh, but, you know, this is one of the examples which I would like to really sh share with you at the end. So just if you are from the management board or the top managers, try to maybe, you know, challenge yourself sometimes. Like a summary, right? <laughs> so um, I think I think I will just uh, say a few words. Um, so what I'm thinking is uh, probably what I would maybe like to leave some of you with, if you are, if this topic is live in your head, is I always, I mean, I would, I would say to yourself, don't put yourself because you are a woman and you want to change those statistics. Push yourself to that next step because this is something that you feel is good for you. That's been my journey, uh, and I feel okay where I am. I don't want more. If it comes, I'll debate. But I think 
I think I think you know look through your individuality and the way that uh, that you are structured your uh, your environment uh, you know all the aspects that Tomek was talking about before it all matters in how you're going to progress so I think I think I think look at look inside and and just just push yourself and stretch yourself like everyone does no matter whether they are woman or man uh, to, to to go farther and grow in the way that you want thank you Alex last last word to summarize yeah, first of all um, I agree on that and so ask for your so uh, ask for support think about it what do you need um, uh, and then talk to the people that uh, could probably give you this kind of support. Think what you want to achieve, um, clear your mind with regards to this, otherwise we can't give you this um, kind of support. So please be clear on that. Be bold, raise your hand and bring a guy into a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> sit, sit to the table and raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, have you got any questions? Please ask, we have time for, for three questions. So you can ask in Polish or in English, no matter. So I would like to encourage you. Thank you, Anja. Uh, I have a question to uh, Ms. Małgorzata Romaniuk because you've mentioned um, before that um, there are clear benefits from diverse teams uh, but we know that sometimes these conversations are difficult we're very fortunate that here we pretty much agree on uh, the uh, benefits on the DI uh, practices and we believe it's the right way to go but sometimes these conversations with business leaders are difficult to carry do you have an example of metrics like hard proven metrics that support these conclusions that would make these conversations a bit easier to carry Okay, so p probably you are referring to those which I said that it's impact on the company's result as well. Uh, so there are some research, probably McKenzie also, you know, uh, publishes that after the crisis in US, they just verified, you know, the, the, the companies who survive with pretty good results that crisis in 2008. And they show those results that the, if the management board, there were more than three women, that the losses in those companies were definitely lower than in the companies without the such high, in fact, representation of women. So this is one of the which I really uh, saw a few years ago, and, and that is still repeating for many of the consulting companies, that they still are, you know, looking on those um, the figures of the companies on New York uh, Stock Exchange. So I do not have the Polish, unfortunately. Maybe somebody will do that. But I also know, uh, looking on the, 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 the level of accepting the risk by the, the women. Uh, in past, I was uh, responsible for risk management in the company. And uh, I saw really a huge change in the accepting, you know, the risk by the women and the men, because I, I, I manage the group of the underwriters. Maybe some of them were more experienced, I will say for sure, but each time when I saw, you know, the application of the women, I've got a better material to make decision. The number of the risk which was presented by those women was really pretty good. Uh, and we can share those examples, as you know, that, uh, that maybe other companies will also focus on that. I don't want to say that the women are definitely better in each you know, aspect on even this risk management, because probably not. But they are looking for the risk from some kind of different angles sometimes. And they also sh help to protect company from the losses. Even I can say on my examples, that each time which I think about the strategic decision, I'm starting from the potential losses. This is, you know, my, my approach to the general management of the company. Otherwise, I see, of course, the benefits. But first of all, I would like to better understand, you know, what could go really wrong. That's why I believe a lot of the women perform or they act in this way. Okej, okay, drugie z trzech pytań. Ktoś z Państwa? Miał być trzy pytania. 
dobiegnę. From your experiences, could you say to us what really works um, for the women um, to build up their confidence in the companies, in, in the workplace? How would you see this uh, support being built for women in the, in the companies? So I'm happy to pick it up and then guys can chip in. So I think um, from my perspective and what worked for me is having a very good um, career sponsor. So someone who is uh, working with me individually and, it's, and it, it sounds big actually it was my boss as well who has been supporting me uh, you know in, in telling me you're good at this right. So I think I think you know of course as everyone as I said I had my fears but uh, but but having someone as a mentor as a as a sponsor someone who is and actually by the way he was uh, he he is a he right so it it wasn't a, a woman who was a mentor uh, and and he was show me showing me or even letting me to talk about those uh, fears uh, in some new situations that I would um, encounter and help me to get through them in my own head so that was very important that's company I think home is really important as well. And I think I, I'm lucky to have that balance uh, of someone who is supporting me in whatever I'm, um, I'm going after. And, and I guess that's to your point, Alex, that you know, being surrounded by people who support you, but on an individual basis. I do believe that this is one-to-one -one relationship rather than big networks where we discuss, but maybe don't take actions. So that's, that would be my, my advice, my answer. Czy jest trzecie pytanie? Jest. Maybe just one to, to your question. Um, so I think, yes, um, you need to have a mentor or a coach. Um, you have to find someone um, who you can trust from your side. And you really have to be open. And what I mean with being open, you don't have to be shy or you shouldn't be shy in talking really about your fears and your obstacles that you are seeing right now. So... Um, because we can't read it out of your face. This is always uh, something what, what I try to explain. Um, so um, as long as you are not open and, and not sharing really this kind of feedback, and it's probably something new, um, uh, what you have to, to um, actually, um, uh, yeah, you have to, to find your way um, to, to make it like this. Um, this is really, really important. So, and this is... Um, why I'm a big fan of this women network as well, because sometimes what I can see is that it's easier to talk to a woman just because it's easier for us um, to understand um, what, what is driving you right now. Um, so this is something what I would like to add. Uh, I have two things that I would like to touch. Uh, so first one, uh, Poland is a relatively good country to, to have children. We have one year maternity leave. Uh, but there is the second side of that because I don't know the numbers, but I assume it's rather women taking one year of maternity leave, even though now actually men have opportunity to take the paternity leave. So from your perspective, uh, managers, leaders, do you encourage men to actually participate in that as well? And there's also one more thing that I would like to talk about, which is, I, I read some article some time ago, which uh, was talking why women actually don't take those opportunities in, to progress uh, in, in their careers. It's because when they get into the, on the market, to the job, they work, they get married, and they reach a, the time that, oh yeah, it's the time to start thinking about having children. And because of the fact that they start thinking about it, they don't take those opportunities. And men actually, well, they don't think in such categories. I assume they don't that because they will have a child, they will not take certain opportunity. So yeah. So, so I, I will just uh, probably comment uh, on that. Uh, so um, in my, let's say, immediate uh, management team, there is uh, probably 15 people, 50-50 uh, split. Um, <laughs> All of them uh, have children. Some of them have three. Some of them have two. Uh, the guys have. So I and and sorry, but I don't think it's um, it, it is an issue if it's not an issue in your own head. 
Uh, that's what I see with my guys, and I even remember a conversation with one of those uh, that she's been working with me for over 10 years, said, okay, I've got two children, now by 30 I, I need to be a manager, so not a team leader, a manager, and I want to have a third kid. That was her goal. That's what she wanted. Some of them don't want it. And I think on encouraging uh, 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 men to take the part, I, I think it's their decision <laughs> as well. I mean, we're not discouraging, for sure, because that's not our role, but it's your individual decision what to do. Personally, I see it growing, so we can see people, uh, uh, you know, splitting that time. I think that's a culture as well. In, in Scandinavian countries, probably you'll have it split 50-50. I think we're getting there. I think there is a positive trend, but for me, first of all, it is a personal decision, not a company decision to, to encourage someone. So that's how I see it. Yeah, I would echo that. Uh, first, I think that paternity leave for men is a relatively new thing, so it will take time until it becomes mainstream. But from our data, we see guys actually be more inclined to take uh, uh, and leverage this uh, as a tool. Uh, on the other hand, uh, for example, on my wife's example, she didn't use the entire one year maternity, right? Uh, she wanted to get back to the workplace. and. Uh, so I think it's all on the individual basis, and I think the 4x4 four four model that was shown probably needs to be applied on, on the individual level. Okay. To przede wszystkim brawa i podziękowania dla naszych panelistów. Dziękuję.